Okay, so it's been about sort of 10 minutes. I've got a few more um, on the go on this one anyway. So what we've actually got now is, you can see this. Um, as you might be able to see, you've got like a, a little lip where you can see the difference between it. So what you don't want to do is just get in there and cut down, because if it drags, you're in a lot of trouble. So what you want to do is make sure you've got a very, very sharp knife. Okay, and we're going to start with, we're going to split the two. And literally, very slowly... We're just going to drag the blade, just pierce and drag. Just do the downward ones for the minute, okay? Then with a dry brush, because you'll pick up some fluid from elsewhere, we'll just give those a little bit of a brush. Okay, then what we're going to do, we're just going to gently run it down. And just take your time and very slowly do it. You don't want to be whipping down there because if it drags you're in a world of trouble okay back with your brush what the brush will do is just separate it slightly okay let me just do this one here bit of a hold your breath moment to be honest okay and then once you're on hopefully you should be able to just lift that one away and that one's fine the other one's moved a little bit but I'm not too concerned about that because what we can just do is give us a tap what it is I didn't cut all the way through so what we need to do is just Okay, so as you can see, the other one's moved slightly. So what we do is we just get him off. Okay, so there's the the opened panel now. So we're happy with that. So we'll just stick that down. So what we've got now, this is slightly moved. So we just use a pair of scissors, just the sharp end, just to drag this back to where it should be. And I'm happy with the way that that's gone. So we just use our cock bud again give it a bit of a press down. Important now that you go around and give it a bit more setting solution and what that'll do, any frayed edges that you might have will then wrap over the edge um, and they'll be fine. So as I do, I usually just to leave them hanging off of somewhere. So we've got this other one here, same thing. Just give that a bit more of a setting solution. And there we go. And as I say, I know there's other ways to do it and I'll probably get 101 emails off of doing it that way saying that that's the hard way to do it but personal way it's your preference of how you like to do it it's the way I like to do it and it works for me so that's the most important thing with all modeling if it works for you that's good enough so we just give that a brush elsewhere and we can maneuver that out there now so there we go in and done and then say so we just do the same for the other side and I'll carry on um, decaling the entire thing and we'll get the tail done as well um, and then we can really start moving on Okay, so as you can see, everything's nice and dry now. Nice, clean cutting mat as well. Um, basically, what we've done, um, two things we actually did. After we'd actually finished putting all the decals on and sorted it all out, and it's all lying nice and flat, and we had hardly any silvering, what we did tend to do then was just get a knife, okay, and run it down the panel lines, um, and then perhaps a little jot, a little sort of few pricks across, cut some of the actual... Um, uh, rivet detail because obviously you get a little bit of silvering showing through that so by just literally popping around with it and putting them in um, and opening up those holes it just stops for a little bit of silvering because obviously it is quite deep um, <clears throat> especially things where you've got big open areas as say down here on the mouth and round numbers and bits like that but you can see the other thing we had to do was cut the um, tail section obviously the US Navy marking and the squadron marking um, obviously goes right the way through so what we had to do is line them up and cut those same with walkway ones on top they had to be cut as well but very straightforward to do not really a problem so what we can do now is get a wash onto this now we're going to use the um, Dark Dirt um, Pro Modeler's wash obviously um, and we're just going to give it a coat absolutely everywhere that will go over the, the white um, as well as the gold grey um, avoid it out of the wheel wells because obviously we've already got those sort of weathered up quite nicely anyway 
but we'll certainly go around everywhere else with it and we'll go over the undercarriage and bits and pieces with the dark if it's not looking too dark we can obviously pop back over it with some of the black to blacken it up so we we'll just give it a good old shake okay so you could pump this out or you could spray it whichever way you wanted to do it so if we just get a, a bottle here Make sure it's a nice clean brush you're going on to. Okay, and then normal thing, we're just going to do circular motions all round to do this. And this is the newer colour of the dark dirt wash. Um, if you're unfamiliar, what we've actually done is lighten it slightly up. Um, and then what you could do is if you wanted it darker, you could use the black. We're just going to pop absolutely everywhere. Okay, so whilst those bits are drying, if we just angle the camera, find the meat. There we go. What we do is paint the wheels now. Now, what I have here, um, I just have a bit of XF1, which has been pre thinned. Now, it's quite thin, but the way I do my wheels, because I often get asked this, for painting obviously to get a nice seam looking around it now as I said before in some of the other video builds what I tend to do if there's no real mark uh, around it I just blends in one to the other I tend to scribe it uh, with a needle to put in a groove and then that way this next bit will work because all I do is get a bit of the thinned black paint and it's quite heavily thinned I'm just hold him up like this okay and I just touch it and let the capillary action run all the way around so we just do it in a few little spots There we go, and the capillary action runs all the way round um, and makes for a very nice seam all the way round there. So then what we do, we just add a little bit more just around the edge, just to make sure we've got a nice area. Just like that. <clears throat> a little bit round here. Okay, then what we'll do is I'll just leave that for about five minutes just to dry off. Because what I'm going to do next is obviously put the thicker black paint around the outside. Trouble is, if you do it when it's still wet, it tends to mix with the thin, then you end up with a lighter area around the middle there. So we just give that a few minutes just to dry off. Okay, so there you go. That's dry now on that center area. So all we do, we've got some normal flat black, which is as unthinned. You could use your tire paint, whichever you're going to do. And then all we do is we just going to go around and obviously what you're doing is there's a bit of paint down there anyway but you're not having to go as close uh, into it as you might have to so we just work our way around carefully with a neck to this if you're expanding tweezers just put your tweezers in you can actually then hold it like that and then Just bring your brush around and obviously because you're not having to go right up to the edge because it's already there you're not having to worry about getting it built up too much then once you're done obviously we can just fill in the middle then obviously what we need to do is make a flat spot on this but obviously we'll wait till it's on the actual aircraft before we put that on and there we go one perfectly done wheel very simple and as I say it's little things like that which really make the difference because when you look at the model and you suddenly realize that it's uh, you know little details like that are all done nicely then it just really helps it all bring it together the other thing as well obviously the nose wheel one is a separate piece so what we've already done we've already painted these black which are the two outer parts which come in to make the wheel um, so obviously all we have just bring you in a second all we do is that you bring these in so it just slips over the top and make sure you're pushed in firm 
Okay, now you've got to line up the little locator pins on this for both sides, which tends to be a little bit tricky. But there we go, they're both in. And then all we do, we've got some Tamiya Extra Thin. We're just going to give it a bit of a poke around the outside and let the capillary action run in between. to bring it all together and what we'll do is we'll sand and buff that in a minute once it's totally dry and then when that's all dry and we're all happy how it's sitting then obviously we can just paint up the rim you know the actual stick um, right the way around the outside so there we go that once that one's done and then once that's all sanded repainted and everything else we can then just prise these two apart we can cut down these two little pins uh, that appear in there, cut them down a little bit because obviously they don't have to be quite that thick and then uh, this will fit quite nicely in there and it gives us our nice painted wheel. So by the time we've cleaned this up a little bit you'll be able to see that it uh, gives a nice sort of weathered effect to it and obviously what we've got to do is weather the inside of the wheel as well. Okay then, so the wash is all totally off. It's come out very very nice I must admit We've got some nice panel lining going on in there and it really has weathered it all in and let's say because it's got a slight bit of texture to the paint um, you know it wasn't a full gloss it's giving it a sort of a grimy white look underneath um, and stuff like that so I'm really happy so now what we can really do is start to bring all this together so the first thing we'll start on the um, nose wheel so we've all got these little parts here which are parts J which is part 10 really um, which is J26 J15 J28 and J47 um, and these are the little parts. Now I painted these all on the sprue. I've just nipped them off, cut them off the sprue. So they will need a little bit of touch-ups um, here and there with a little bit of white, but we can do that. Uh, that's not a problem at all. So what we're going to do now is fit these. Now because we're dealing with such small parts, if you used to use glue and we've painted already something like um, Tamiya Extra Thin, something like that, what's going to happen is that it will actually start bubbling up the paint and melt it. Now that's okay if you're just going to touch and it sits and it's no problem. But if you're going to move it around, wiggle it around, perhaps have a bit of trouble getting in there, then um, obviously it's going to cause a few little problems. Because what you end up doing is just melting the paint away and you'll be left with plastic and it look unsightly. So the way around that, for little bits like this, I just use super glue. Now this is a medium sort of CA. Um, I call it really sort of a thicker one um, with the Zamp one anyway. So what I do, you've probably seen me do this before, but to save my cutting mat, all I have is a bit of 40mm Tamiya tape. And I'm just going to put a little puddle of glue, just a little blob, just like that. And then we can start fixing these in. So there's two ways. You can either take a cocktail stick, okay, and mark the areas where these are going to go. And for instance, this one's going to go in here. So we just get a couple of little drops in that rough area. And then we can come along and we can actually poke this one in with any luck. That's going to fit in like that. So we just take a little tiny bit of super glue. And there we go, that's that fitted in nicely done like that. So there's that one done. So that's the nose gear in. Obviously, we've still got to put the nose wheel on, but as soon as we get that on. So what I'm going to do is basically the same for the main gears back here as well. They've just got the hoses to go in. Um, if you remember, we didn't put the big hoses in and the other bits and pieces, but they can all go in now and then we'll fix the main gear to that back one. Okay, so this is the point where it's personal choice. You can either have wings up or wings down. Uh, personally, I'm going to go with wings up. That way it'll fit on the bookcase. Um, so if we bring you in nice and tight here. Um, it's quite a detailed little area here. You've got a hose down the back, which is very straightforward. Um, you've got a couple of these uh, right angle ones. Um, and they're very straightforward because they just go up as well. And then after that, you just literally push in fit the little clips. It looks a lot more complicated than it actually is, I can assure you. Um, just to give you a quick run through. Uh, if you have the little, um, there's two little bolts um, on these little L-shaped pieces. So if you have those facing outwards, I put them in a bit of super glue, just for speed. Obviously, you can poke them in how you like. So we just poke both of those in. So both of those are in. So we just let those set a second. They've got to be nice and square, otherwise your wing fold won't be too square. Um, so those are in like that, and then basically you can just come along with your your top part here, and then if you line up all your holes correctly, let's just put a little bit of glue on those pins, 
as they will interlock okay and just line up your holes together as you can see and then just push them in it should be a very straightforward fit then obviously you want to make sure that you're 90 degrees up and that you're not facing a wonky angle or anything else like that and once they're in and then afterwards you can just put these um, last few bits and pieces in which are very straightforward you can use super glue or you can actually use um, your normal glue what I've done for a bit of strength both directions I've used glue um, and I've used um, a touch of um, super glue for holding it in place and then I've gone round and used my normal extra thin just to weld it up and make this strong because this is one of those things where uh, if it does come apart you're going to lose lots of bits and pieces but you'll see in a minute I'm going to have this as a separate section so it can just lift on and off um, and that way it makes it a lot more easy getting it around shows and things like that. So we just fit these final last bits on. Okay, so the sort of penultimate parts to go on now um, is obviously the engine work. Oh, sorry, engine, gun bay even. Um, as you can see, we've got the gun bay in there. Just needs a little bit of touch up with some silver paint in there. But as you see, it's quite a nice um, detailed little set. Um, it looks a lot more complicated going together than it actually is. Basically, what you've got on your photo etch fret, I've already pre-painted these silver, as you can see. So all we do, we just clip these out carefully. As I say, with all photo etch, just try and keep it as flat as possible because um, it just makes things a lot easier when you're actually coming to fold it. So we just snip these out. Okay, so if I just, there's one. Now, um, these are very, very handy. These are the Tamiya bending uh, pliers. Well, it's basically, they're just like normal pliers, but they're flat, and they've also got some angles on there, so you can do it. So all we're going to do with this, if you have a look at it, you can see the details. If you grab the first part of it, and you just bend it slightly, then grab the outer part, and then bend it slightly. Okay, and repeat on the other side. So if we just bring you in a bit, you can see this. Okay, so we're just lining up with the first bend and then we bend it. And then on with the second one and then we bend that round. Okay, so you sort of end up with this type of shape. And then all we do is flatten down. Just running along and pushing them down. And what that will do will give us this type of flat shape. How oh, you can actually see that. There we go which then gives us your ammo belt. So we just repeat that for the other side. So okay, there we go, there's those done. So what we do, we'll just grab one of each, um, and as you can see, they sort of, the way they go, um, the ammo feeds upwards. So we're doing the other side to this one. If I just bring this one in shots, slightly, you can see it um, like that. So what we're gonna do, we just get a bit of super glue, because we're working with PE, and we want this pretty instant, so we can use super glue. So we just put a drop at the top and we grab the short one to start with. Okay, and then all we do is we place this and show you sort of the top side. So if you like, the first link is in. So there it is, just like that. And then what we actually do is it has a cover. So with a bit more super glue over the top. Okay, and then these little plates, there's a little groove on the inside, which then fits and slots right over the entire thing giving you the outer part so there's one done same for okay, the other so side now we're ready to go in so obviously you can feed the guns straight in um, obviously you want the lower one uh, goes in first because that one's got the longer thread which goes up to the top um, so what it was because it overwraps the, the top one um, you want to put the shorter one in first and it lays down the other one goes over the top thing is because threading through is a bit of a pain I've cut the barrels off so all we'll do bit of super glue the back okay so we've moved on a little bit but we haven't done anything you know too complicated refueling probe put that together and then that goes on one thing i have noticed though if you have the refueling probe on you can't use the top weapons bay um up there because otherwise um they clash so you can no way you can get a zuni rocket up there um i presume there is a way of fiddling around with it to make it fit slightly better um which is something i'll fiddle about at a later date but if you do it via the book um it uh, well doesn't fit really and then obviously you've got the cover door 
which will go on something like so. He says once he's worked it out how it all goes in. Something on like that, and that's your refueling probe set up just on the front like that. So we get the elephant ears. So there we go. Let's just pull those off for a moment to show you the other bits. What I've actually done, we've obviously unmasked the canopy and done that. We've used a little bit of um, Tamiya's uh, brass uh, for doing the little seeker eye at the front, that little seeker. Um, it's a nice little colour match for that because it really does work. So there we go. That's basically done. It's been given a flat coat all over, just simple spray a flat coat on. Um, so basically locks in all the weathering and everything else like that. So in the meantime, obviously we've got the wing section. So then what I've done is I've glued the bottom part on um, really so this can be transported like this if it's going to shows and things like that because um, obviously keeping it all together would be a bit of a nightmare. So what we do, we just sit this down here. It should fall in the holes just like that. Front one goes in. There we go. That's in. Job done. So that's the wing section in, looking fantastic, really giving you a sense of scale now, how big this actual jet is. Then obviously, you know, you've probably got yours on, but for myself, uh, if you wanted to, you can then fit the engine on the back, to line up those grooves. There we go, and we just pop a standing stick under there to hold it in place, just for a sec. There we go, just like that, makes one very big, fantastic kit. And obviously weapons fit, personal choice, you can fit it how you like. Um, the Zuni rockets, they go together very, very nicely. One thing is a bit of a shame, the sidewinders, um, there's no decals or any markings for that, so you're going to have to put your own on there. Obviously, live round, uh, brown band around the back for the rocket motor, and a yellow one around the front for the wall head. Um, so that's quite straightforward to do those, or you can leave it unarmed, whichever way you want to do it. This one I'm going to have as unarmed, have the weapons next to it, because obviously we've got the tail off, so we won't be carrying weapons at the same time, perhaps. Um, the other little thing we've done is we've actually put together, unmasked to check it, um, and, uh, we've put in this little black piece uh, which is for the framing now we've still got the mirrors to go on there but to give you a sense of uh, how it's going to look all closed up it'll be something like that and then obviously the last thing really we've got to take care of is the actual seat itself which is the harnesses so if we just move this over here for one second just over like that now the harnesses themselves as you say they come on the PE part so all we're going to do is snip those off so we'll just say so keeping it as flat as you can because it will just make it easier. Now I painted them grey but obviously you can do your belts for any particular colour scheme you saw but I've got a shot of one of these seats and it shows it with grey belts so that's good enough for me. So we just snip these off and then having a, a look at some reference photos they really do help on this. What you can do then is basically sort them out. Now the instructions are pretty good on this one for the seat of showing where the belts go um, and how they sit and all the rest of it and how they actually all glue together because there's various parts of the belt system. So you could just follow that one. Now if you wanted to use, could use um, PE glue um, for doing something like this. Gator glue is a very good one. Um, myself, because it's belts and I like to mould them into shape, I do tend to use a little bit of um, super glue or CA glue. So same thing, just get a little bit to protect your work top <clears throat> and then we can place him on and if we just do this first one to start with so if we just get hold of this carefully and we just put a drop of glue on this back part now if I'm correct this one is going to fit to the rear in between the cushion heads so we just let go of that for the moment and then what we'll do is we're just going to Now we just use a pair of scissors, but obviously ideally you want to use something that uh, doesn't scratch as much as a pair of scissors as I'm doing here. But what we do, we'll fit that one in, let that one dry off, and to speed things up, just for things like this, I would use a bit of kicker, because it just saves having to wait for it all to dry, and it can take a, quite a long time. Okay, that's in, and then you can actually just bend these harnesses all in and round, see how they're going to sit, and you can sort of mould them into the shape that you want. So 
something like that for the first one and then obviously just build up the seats and then we can get it installed okay and there we go we're all done a few little areas which we've um you know haven't really shown you but they're quite straightforward lights have gone on uh, lights in the undercarriage as well there's just one on the uh, um, starboard side that has gone on there obviously we've fixed up on the photo etch parts we've got the photo etch mirrors um on there uh, and we've put in the little activators for the uh for the canopy the way that works and it's a nice little slot and they say it can be shown open or closed obviously the belts are on, on the harnesses and livened up the cockpit my only concern is with the entire kit is the cockpit is very basic for a 132 if you did want to replace it Aries do a replacement cockpit set which I think would be well worth doing it general accuracy of the kit yes there is a few issues but at the end of the day it looks like a crusader to me it's lovely in this scale it is a fantastic scale of aircraft to have um, I really like it cutting the tail off as obviously if we did on this build um, personal choice if you want to do it or not um, with this one can be shown on or off so um, you know obviously just personal preference of how you like it decals are my only real concern with the kit um, obviously we've got no rescue markings um, they're shown on the illustration sheet um, that it has them but unfortunately they're not actually on the decal sheet themselves so somebody forgot to actually add those to that so you might have to raid your um, spares box but I'm sure the um, decal companies will be along soon with loads of fantastic schemes to do if you're a Crusader fan or any of the Vought type of aircraft fan you will love this kit it's extremely you know potent it stands out very very well it's a great looking kit the great thing as well being navy it folds up this will fit on a bookcase so it's not going to be your standard 132 which takes up the dining room table. I hope you enjoyed the build and if you have join me again next time.